This video is brought to you by the Farmer Klein YouTube channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Hello everybody, welcome back to another Farming Simulator 22 Map First Impressions video. Today we're going to take a look at Map Alpine. But before that, this video is brought to you by Bad Habit 99 and Farm Alls Forever. Thank you for being farm barons. So the Map Alpine map can be found over at the Farming Simulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. And as of the 1.0 release, this map is available for PC players only. Let me read you some of the description. Welcome to Map Alpine, a fictional map with beautiful landscape and large lake. This map has 161 fields, 188 farmlands, two biogas plants, several cell points, multiple placeables. The more tree mod is recommended and have fun exploring the map. Now there is an important note that I don't really understand. Maybe somebody can explain it to me. It says no measuring plates were installed on the farms. Now, when I read that, I think it means there's no scales on the farms, but I don't know why that is an important note. Now, this map does have some required mods. Those required mods are the Half Timbered Barn, the Hessen Farm, the Landsberg Farm, Lower Bavarian Farm, and the map itself. So, in addition to those required mods, we are also going to be making use of additional field info, additional game settings, animal food overview, field lease, field calculator, precision farming, and straw harvest. Now, I will tell you, if you load this map up in farm and manager mode or start from scratch, the main farm is built out exactly how you see it here in new farmer mode. In fact, you do also own machinery in all play modes. The only difference is, of course, your bank balance and the fact that you do not own any land. I loaded this map up with a low powered system that used to integrated graphics, and I found that the performance was very, very good and had a fairly steady 60 frames per second. Now, quick warning the lighting on this map is very, very bright. I warned you, I warned you because it is very bright in my opinion, as compared to some of the lightings that we have seen in some very recent maps. Let's go ahead and take a look at the PDA. Now this is a 4X map, and this is basically at its heart, a slightly modified Erlengrot for the majority of the map. There is a section up here, which is an extension that has been built out, but the vast majority of this map is a slightly modified Erlengrot. So if you are familiar with Erlengrot, you're gonna see a lot of familiarity. This map does have all the standard crops available to us in Farm Sim 22, as well as our premium expansion if you do have that enabled with red beets, carrots, and parsnips. If we take a look at our farmland screen, you see we start by owning farmland ID 168, 121, 120, and 119. Now, given the fact that this is a 4X map, these fields are a lot bigger than they would appear, but we do have abundance of fields on this map, and not everything is going to be viable. Now, in addition to the starting farm at 168, which you can buy in any alternate game mode for $376,000, we have a buildable plot here at 167 for $171,000. We also have a cow farm, a farmland ID 15 for $455,000. There is a cow and chicken farm at farmland ID 179. Actually, I believe it's 178. I thought it said 179 earlier. It is $430,000. We have a horse farm at farmland ID 92. Sorry, 93. That can be bought for $529,000. And then we have a cow farm up here, farmland ID 98. That can be bought for $1.5 million. And then we have a cow pasture that is a farmland ID 97. That can be bought for $52,000. Let's go ahead and take a look at our farmland lease screen. This is going to show us all of the viable farmlands, how large those farmlands are, if those farmlands include any field or fields, what is 
included. And then lastly, how much is this farmland going to cost us? As we can see with respect to the field and farmland numbers, they are matching up one for one all the way up here till farmland ID 96. And then at that point, things get a little squirrely at farmland ID 97, but we are back in the realms of normalcy beyond that, all the way up to our final field, which is going to be farmland ID 161. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our field calculator screen. And this is going to show us the specific sizes of each particular field. And you can see we've got a bunch of fields that are one hectare or less, even though this is a 4X map. This map is going to be ideal for people who want to play with small machinery or light on the medium sized machinery, simply because the vast majority of the agricultural farmland here is so small. Let's go ahead and take a look at our soil map. This is making use of the generic soil map. So let's see how it's being applied to the fields. If we can see much at all, given the small size of these fields and the fact that a vast majority of this map is either covered in water or in grass. To the north in the expanded area, we do have a bit of low man silty clay to the eastern side of the lake. To the western side of the lake, we have sandy loam and loam. And then down in the main part of the map, we've got a fairly predominant aspect of sandy loam and loam off to the west. We've got a bit more of loamy sand mixing in. Taking a look at our crop counter, we do have the standard base game crop counter that is available to us in Farm Sim 22. And looking at our prices screen, we do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game crops that are once again available to us in FS22, as well as our eggs, wool, and milk, and our silage, hay, straw, and grass. The story continues as we move down through all of the base game production items because we once again do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game production items. We also have the ability of buying bulk lime, as well as getting rid of our stones at two different sell points. Now, with respect to the platinum expansion, we do not have the ability to sell any of the platinum expansion production items. If you do want to get into those, you will need to put down your own sell point. But the premium expansion, we do indeed have the ability to sell the premium expansion production items, as well as separated manure. And if you are playing with pumps and or not pumps and hoses, but with Straw harvest, we do have the ability of getting rid of our hay and straw pellets as well. With respect to our starting fleet, we start out with a decent listing of starting equipment. Most of it is brand new. Some of it does need a little bit of maintenance, but overall, we are fairly good. With respect to our animals, we do start out with a fair number of chickens at the main starting farm. We do have contracts available on this map. We do not own any production chains at the start. And this map does not have any collectibles. With respect to our starting fleet, we start out with the Steyr 8150 small tractor, the Fent 724 Vario, the John Deere 7810, and Massey Ferguson 3670 medium tractors. We have the Nova 330 Harvester that is paired up with the Power Stream 500 header. And then we also have our 1986 pickup truck, the DD24073-2 XXL trailer. We have the Echo Mat Plow, as well as the All Rounder Flatline 600 Cultivator, the TerraSim C6F Seeder, we have the ZATS 3200 Fertilize Spreader, as well as the GMD 4411 and the GMD 3123F Side Mower and Front Mower. We have the Alpine Hit 4.4H Tether and the Pot Pottinger Top 342 Wind Rower the Ball Alpine 251 Forage Wagon, and the Pontager Impress 125 F Pro Round Baler. For our round bales, we have a Flegel three-point hitch round bale transport. We have the Hauer XB190 front loader arms. For the front loader arms, we have the Bale King bale spike, pallet fork, and universal bucket. And we wrap it all up with a 3,300 kilogram front weight and a 600 kilogram front weight. As far as mods and DLCs, this map does not have any custom vehicles or implements. Now, I'm just going to quickly tab over here to the main starting farm. And like I said, this map is basically an edit of Erlengrot at its heart. And we can really see that here at the main starting farm. 
We have the Erlengrot Garage. We have the Erlengrot Farmhouse with our sleep trigger here on the side. We have a few little changes here from FS22's Erlengrot with the fact that we have chickens as opposed to cows. As we saw earlier, we have 124 chickens. We can store up to 360. We have our food. And then we have our eggs here on the side. We have our power washer. We have a water trigger. We have our electric charging station. An easy shed for some more of our implements. We have a base game silo with our dump and fill. And then we have a barn here to once again store more of our machinery and implements. And that is pretty much the main farm area here. As I mentioned, down just below the starting farm. Can we not open these doors, people? Jeez. Just down from the main starting farm, we do have a large placeable area. We can sell the wall that surrounds that if we want to, or we can just leave that up. As far as what can we sell here at the farm, we can sell all the buildings here at the farm, but sadly there is a large amount of decorative elements that will remain. And to some degree, those decorative elements are going to impact your ability to fully customize this farmyard. See a little bit of altitude, and once again, if you are familiar with Erlengrot, well, you're going to be fairly familiar with this variant of Erlengrot, at least at this part of the map. Now, one thing I do wish is that the mini map down here did not include so much of the surrounding area that is unplayable because it makes all of these fields so, so close together that practically it's, it's just a jumbled up mess down here just south and west of the starting farm. Here we have that buildable area. Now to some degree, we're just going to maybe do a cursory overview of this main part of the map because again, it is so much like Erlengrot that if we went in, we're not gonna do a drive around, we're just gonna fly around partially because this is the fourth map video I have recorded tonight and I'm getting awful tired. It's midnight my time. And the fact that 99% of this is so much like Erlengrot, we do have this new section up here, but that is honestly about all that is really different. We got our train transfer silo here to transfer a product to and from the train and a trailer. We also have a rent train trigger over here as well. We have our animal dealer with our bale trailer, our bale cell point around the back. Oddly enough, our pickup truck is parked over here at the dock. And this was outside of playable bounds in Erlengrot. This whole lake area was outside the playable area. A sugar mill located right here. So we have our power point, we have our dump point and our interactive icon. And at this point we are basically just ready to leave the map boundary from the base game. We have a grain cell point. This is going to be a buy point for some products. And then we have our stone crusher. This is going to be a grape processor, although this looks to be a customized variant. We have our pallet point and we have our dump point there. And at this point, we are now in unfound territory. We have made our way outside of the Erlengrot map. 
This map does have kind of scattered around barns here, there, and yonder, which is a nice thing to see. You can imagine that in kind of a sprawling countryside like this, we would have fields and we would have barns just kind of scattered around clumps of fields. And the same thing up here. And these are simply based, basically storage locations. I did buy all the land when I was taking a look at this map before recording. And none of those had animal pens associated with them. Got a little bit of a grapevine down here by the water's edge. We do have two biogas plants on this map. The northern biogas plant is the smaller of the two. Let's go ahead and kind of run down what we have here on the map. We have 15 productions on this map. We have two BGAs. We have a flour mill. We have our chocolatier, which is, of course, base Erlengrot. We have the cheese factory, which is the base Erlengrot production. We have a sawmill, spinnery. We have a dairy, bakery, two large greenhouses, a tailor, the sugar mill, the carpentry, and the grape processor. So here we have one of the two BGAs. We have three pull-through silage bunkers. We have the BGA itself and ample storage for machinery and whatnot. We got a little town over here on this side of the map, and I do believe that this is kind of where we had that, that fictional map off in the distance on the other side of the lake back in Erlingrot. Here we have one of the greenhouses. We have the bakery located right here. It is just a standard FS-22 bakery. Like how we have the smoke effects coming out of these, some of these stacks. And here is one of the farms that we talked about earlier. Let's go ahead and pick it up. I went ahead and picked up some of the other farms also on the map. And this is going to be our cow farm. So we have our sleep trigger and our wardrobe trigger. Some machine storage. We have our dump and fill point here for our silo. A pull through silage bunker. Then here we have our dairy trigger. Our cow area for 45 cows. And some more vehicles and implement storage. We have a biomass heating plant down here to sell our wood chips and our logs. And now we're going to be making our way kind of back into where the main map was. That's where we started out at. An observation tower. Let's loop back over here to kind of where the animal dealer was. We do have a hay loft that's located over there. Some more kind of random barns, as I mentioned. Our spinnery is located right here. So we have our spawn point for our fabric, our dump point in our interactive icon. We have our fuel station. And we're back across the road and across the river. And we've got an abundance of really, really small fields down here. And a lot of these could easily be merged together because all we have is separated by some painted ground textures. 
And kind of speaking of that, let's come over here to our build zone because the description did mention that were lots of placeables. And I wanted to know is, are these placeables a part of the map or are they because of all the required mods? So we do have some customized buildings that are listed as part of the map. This one you can only rotate on 90 degree axis. And then of course we're gonna have several that are part of the various required mods as well. Let's check and see what we have in the way of productions. Mostly base game and DLC stuff, but there are a few that are also tied to those required mods. The vast majority of these placeables that the description talked about were a part of the various required mods in order to load this map up. We do have some custom round textures, quite the assortment of round textures. Fairly standard FS22 plants and trees. Now, as far as Erlenrot edits go, this one is quite nice. I have seen several nice edits. We have a grain cell point down here. We have another stone crusher. And then here we have the horse farm. So a wardrobe and sleep trigger. No, sorry, this is not the horse farm. This is the cow and chicken farm. So we're dump point for our chicken feed. Our egg spawn point. And here we have the chicken buy point. 360 chickens in here. 360. Bail and implement storage. A power washer. Over here we have our silo, so we have our dump and fill point. And then we have our cow barn. So we have our drop off point for our food and straw. We have our flurry point here. We have our cow delivery agent. 80 cows. Flurry storage. We're going to have our milk trigger. Our dump point for our silo. And our fill point for our silo. And then inside we have a pull through stylage bunker. Here we have the horse farm. Just got some buildings. We have a fuel tank. We have a horse building here for eight horses. We have a food trough. A little bit of an exercise area here as well. And this was a field in the original Erlingrot. We have our vehicle shop located right here with our repair trigger. Right next to that we do have our fuel point. Here we have the cheese factory with our interactive icon, our pallet spawn point, and our dump point. 
coming back to where the shop is we have our chocolate factory and inside we have our interactive icon pallet point and dump point this is going to be our spinnery interactive icon pallet point and dump point our sawmill or wood cell trigger we have our pallet point and interactive icon this is going to be a point where we can buy mime our carpentry pallet point wood cell trigger and interactive point and then we've got a whole lot of just kind of fields and grass up in here there is a little bit of a building zone way up here in the extreme northeast corner of the original map. And while we're kind of making our way up here, let's talk about our scoring. A full point with respect to production being built in because we do have 15 productions built in, as we have mentioned earlier. We're going to begin the map a full point with respect to the ability to sell all our basing props, production items, and animal outputs. We're going to begin the map a half a point with respect to being able to customize the farms because most of these farms, you can sell a lot of the buildings, but what happens is a lot of the deco elements are going to remain all over the place, which is going to make customizing the area by putting additional buildings down rather difficult. So here we have our Erlingrot BGA with our digestate fill pipe and our dump point. We have our digester here, our interactive icon, and two three-sided bunkers. Here we have the train station. Rent train icon. Coming back to town, we have our grocery cell point located right there. And we'll make our way up here to our hotel. The hotel is a cell point as well. Continue to climb the mountain here. And this is going to be where we have our cow farm or another cow farm. So we have our slurry pit. We've got some storage. Our base game silo. Up on this level, then we have our cow barn. So we have our milk trigger. Side here we have our delivery trigger for 45 cows in total and our food trough of our slurry point then we have our sleep trigger and Order of trigger over here. And then across the road we have a cow pasture. So we have our milk point, food, water, and animal delivery. For 60 cows in total here. Well, heavens to Betsy, how are you doing today? Yeah, that's what I thought. We'll make our way across. You can see how this expanded section really does add to the map. Early today when the map released, I was kind of curious, why on earth was it getting such low scores? And then when I had an opportunity to actually load the map up this evening, I kind of realized I feel it's getting low scores because it's an edit of Erlingrot. And I guess folks just don't either like Erlingrot or don't feel that enough was changed in order to merit any sort of higher score. So 
So we've got another sell point here, although we do not actually see the trigger for that. I think if I pull it up, it's going to be located where? So let's pull up the map. Restaurant. Let's tag. Green beam it. Oh, right here around the side. Very, very sneaky and kind of a tight quarters. We need to come in here with a very tight trailer to make it up this hill and immediately turn here. And then I guess get backed around, turn around, and then back into the cell point location. So guys, that is, that's going to be Map Alpine. Kind of a flying look at this because so much of this is the same. And if you know Erlengrot, well, you're going to be familiar with this huge section of the map. There's just some subtle changes here and there like this that has been added. But overall, the vast majority of this map is Erlengrot. And if you played this in 19 or if you played it in 22, then you got a pretty good idea of where you're going to find most of these things. With respect to abilities where probably are using the new texturing technique, yes, we are going to give the map a full point there. And trigger and interactive areas clearly marked. We're going to give the map a full point there as well because it was my fault. I did not see where that one cell point was dumping at that we just took a look at. So that's going to give this map a score of four and a half out of five. I'd love to know what you all think of map alpine do you think it's too much like erlingrot and therefore really really doesn't deserve a huge high score from a from a emotional standpoint i'm kind of mixed bag on that but from an objective standpoint it scores how it scores and that is kind of how our scoring metric has been set up but at any rate let me know what you all think down in the comments below and until next time happy farming